Hello and welcome to this video on the AGH Synth Multiburst Envelopes. A module that's elevating your burst that bit further, which we'll look at in a second. But first, let's check out what's to come in the video. This video is sponsored by AGH Synth. Now pop a module image on screen and we'll go through the features in a second, but to quantify this idea of taking bursts up a level, this is a burst generator that allows you to envelope shape your bursts, and it's also got some clever slope control that will take several other modules to kind of patch and generate with other burst generators. There's some clever internal external clocking where we can mix them together for polyrhythms, CV control over everything, and it's perfect for nice slow glacial ambient kind of wanderings of envelope shapes fading in and out because you can clock it randomly or just step through very slowly if you wish. Or we can burst those nice fast ratchets and bursts within synth lines, which is what I'll focus on in the video. So let's first take a look at the features of the module. So quickly running down the panel here, top to bottom, we have our envelope control on this rotary switch. We then select between one and 40 bursts. We have a manual trigger button and a manual clock button, so we can progress with button presses through this burst. We can be in one shot mode, where it will only trigger via button or external signal when the whole burst is complete, or a re-trigger mode where we can re-trigger this while it's still actively bursting. We have an internal LFO, which is the clock for these envelopes and the burst, that we can CV control and turn off if we'd like to make that inactive. We have an external clock input with this clock button. And because we can actually turn off the LFO, we can just clock the behavior, or we can actually have the LFO brought in via CV or via the knob and mix this with an external clock for polyrhythms. We can slope in these envelopes, again with CV control, and we have a gate output that's not to five volts and our main output that's not to 10 volts. And all the CV over all the behaviors here. If we take a quick look, at setting up a burst, pick our envelope shape, number of bursts, internal speed. Let's slope these bursts in and fire off a burst. You can see the burst dries there. Let's make them fall, make them a bit faster and thinner. If we look at pulse width, we can see here with this pulse, for example, we have pulses that rise and fall per step. However, we can create overlapping pulses where the pulse width is longer than the internal clock rate or step length and create staircase waves. And there's lots of interesting behaviors like that we'll explore in the video. The burst and the slope control are set when we trigger a burst. So even if we trigger a new burst to happen or we're actively modulating or turning these knobs, these won't change until the next burst comes round. The envelope, LFO rate and pulse width via the knob or via CV can actively change what's happening during the stage of burst. And of course you can do that in between your bursts as well. When you plug in an envelope CV, this switch is disregarded and you CV backwards around anti-clockwise around these envelope shapes. And that's a quick look at the module's features. Let's get into listening to all these envelopes with varying modulating pulse widths before we get into some patches. Those patches are on the screen with the timing index if you'd like to skip around. So let's dive in. So here we'll take a look at pulse width and modulating the pulse width. I'm clocking this externally, triggering it externally just with an audio rate signal. So in one shot mode, it will make it loop, have a slope that's making these rise. And let's just first go backwards through the waveform with some CV. CV is a slow LFO. I'm plugging into the pulse width CV here 
overrides the knob and this becomes an attenuator for the incoming CV. So let's just crank that up. And we can see the pulse width of this square or pulse wave change. Easier to see there with a slope setting. There's adjusting the level relative to the number of bursts. Falling linear ramps. Triangles. Upward linear ramps. Logarithmic falls, a bit like a shark fin. Let's make this slope up again. And you can see that during the case of the burst, these envelopes will re-trigger. If we're left with an envelope that's longer than the trigger and the clock rate there, then it will just keep going, it won't reset until it's finished. It will play all the way through as it's in one-shot mode. Rising exponential ramps. Nice tight whippy kind of rises. Falling exponential decays or And these sign like humps. So here I've got the multi burst envelope doing some interesting bouncing bass lines. It's modulating folding, VCA levels, some waveform mixing. I can blend in some more sounds here on this mixer. Lose the drums. And there's a splash of reverb on this as well. So going down to my core sound, this is the output, multi-burst output in green here. And I'm modulating the slope and the pulse width to adjust the width of these nice tight exponential decaying envelopes and the slope to get rising or falling bursts. Now if I remove the modulation, adding in this yellow LFO to slope, red LFO here to the pulse width, shorter, wider envelope times there, longer or shorter decays relative to the clock pulse, sloping in and out. This is just a fun kind of bouncing baseline patch that I wanted to share. So here I'm looking at multi-burst envelopes for beats. Now I'm mixing together a regular hi-hat rhythm there. The blue trace is the mixture of signals that's triggering my hi-hat. Green trace is the output of the multi-burst and that's mixing in with these triggers, as you'll see on the blue trace. This is just internally clocked. I'm using the slope output as well as mixing it in to trigger the hi-hat, I'm using it to pan the hi-hat. So I'm finding it quite interesting to use the slope here to pan the hi-hats. Even when they're fast, kind of little, nearly audio rate bursts. So here I'm synthesizing old percussion or rather old drum machine versions of percussion sounds. Think of a guiro or gyro and a kajada. We'd find these in things like the Mini Pops Korg drum machine, and that's all over some of Jean-Michel Jarre's work. Kick and snare is my backing. And this is what I'm synthesizing. Mixing two triggers of varying velocities with the slope out triggered little burst. The multi-burst envelope on its own sounds like this and I'm using the triggers to both trigger the sound and control the level of a VCA. Now this is mixed with two triggers that are 
already changing in velocity, so adding in this sloped. So there's a real groove and feel to it with this slope all the way down. So in a similar vein to using fast bursts for something like a scrape of a guiro or gyro and bits of percussion, here I'm using it like a fast strum. Strum, strum, I'm trying to vocally articulate that subconsciously, I'm trying to strum across some strings. Now if I remove the multi-burst envelope from this patch, here's what we have. Simple low bass drum, just kind of keeping time, and a basic trigger that, 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 that. That trigger doesn't change, and it's just plucking random notes out of some fast quantized parts. And when these triggers hit, we get these notes. Three notes per bar, really simple. Adding the trigger in, this has been triggered on one of the last steps in the sequence, so it kind of strums, strums, if I articulate that again, into that first note. Rung. This nice kind of strum across these virtual strings. Now to make this loop, I have this in one shot mode, meaning if I press twice instead of once, it won't reset, it won't re-trigger. Re-trigger will re-trigger every time this is pressed. But we don't have a loop mode anywhere on the module itself. So a simple way of making it loop, and this is clocked externally, is to trigger this from a spare output from your oscillator. I have an oscillator into the filter that I'm modulating, and simply plugging a spare waveform in and going to one shot mode, this will loop. It won't trigger until this loop has finished. Again, this burst of four decaying envelopes there. If I re-trigger it, I'll never actually get the whole burst. So you want this in one shot mode and just anything audio rate will effectively make this loop. It's a nice simple way to get looping, rising, sloping, changing envelopes. If the pulse width's too high and the last envelope in the burst is too long, it won't reset. So because that last bit of decay there, the last bit of that envelope isn't complete, it won't re-trigger. Again, we're in one-shot mode, it needs to finish this whole cycle. So it's taken a four burst part and given as a five note part. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. So it's an interesting way of playing and modulating pulse width. Now we can also get interesting polyrhythms by simply turning up the LFO while the clock is present. These will both clock the module. Clock on its own. Let's increase the LFO rate and add some in. So here I'm using the multi-burst envelope to synthesize this kind of little rattle, clap type sound. And if we look back at vintage drum machines like say an 808, you can see that the clap is a series of bursts, a kind of series of hits together. And there's an image on screen to indicate that. So I'm using the multi-burst envelope here in a similar vein to give me a burst of decaying envelopes to control the level and some filtering of some noise. Now losing my other sounds, here's that patch. Losing the effects, this is just noise controlled by this envelope. I've given it a bit of a slope, nice tight low pulse width. Play with the rate of triggering. It's just like scraping something, it's just this nice tight little rattle, good for playing into some of the drum sounds. Some effects back on this clap sound. So here I'm using the multi-burst envelopes as a pitch sequencer, as a kind of pattern generator. With a rising slope, this has been attenuated externally and then being quantized, and I'm using it for pitch in this patch. 
Let's remove the effects and the rest of the patch, and here's the droning oscillator controlled by this burst that's been quantized. And if we bring that pulse width right up, as we've seen elsewhere in this video, we can actually have a pulse width that's longer than the actual clock cycle of each burst and get overlapping staircasing waves. Let's slope downwards. And what notes this is playing is determined by my external attenuation before I go into the quantizer. And you can hear there's lots of modulation of my oscillator, octave shifting, folding. But the basic pitch all comes from here. So these bursts form an interesting way to work. Creating patterns, pitches and melodies when quantized. And this could just be triggered more irregularly, having a rhythmic pattern playing here. So here I'm going to make use of the gate output to control another envelope. The blue trace is the gate output. Green trace is the actual multi-burst envelope out, which at the moment we're not using. And the yellow trace is this ADSR, so I can shape that via bursting it with this gate. And as the pulse width will affect the gate output as well as the internal envelopes, and this is an ADSR which will respond to gate length changes. Let's share that with some different pulse widths or different gate lengths. So although this particular ADSR has lots of CV inputs for the time stages, we could modulate the pulse width here to get changes in a different envelope external to the one in the multiburst envelopes. Let's try a few different things, like changing the attack time by sloping in a pulse. And you could see in here we got some pretty interesting changes. Let's try differing decay times. We could do other things like say use this for panning, where we use the gating of the envelope for our filtering and level. And as that pulse is increasing, it's sounding like the sound is moving from side to side. So here we're using a kind of nice trick here to get kind of a double burst, a triggered and clocked burst with the addition of extra LFOs internally. Now if I remove those and remove my triggers, you'll notice the hi hats stop playing. If I had a trigger at the start of the bar, this has been clocked by a shuffled probability set of rhythms and gates. So it's quite an interesting rhythmic burst or pattern if you like, because it's pretty much looping if I leave the trigger on. So this cycling, looping, kind of shifting burst kind of sounds like a sequenced pattern. But by gating the LFO, and the LFO right here becomes an attenuator for the input. So I can choose where, in terms of rate, this gate will take the internal LFO and add these in to the existing clocked triggers. So every time that gate goes high, grrr, we're getting that little burst. And of course, the amount of bursts, when this is being triggered, what the clock's doing, the rates, the pulse width, it's all interactive here. So here I'm using the multi-burst envelope to drive the whole patch. 
and the focus of the patch here is CV over the internal LFO rate. The LFO rate here becomes an attenuator for incoming CV. So using an external utility, have an offset voltage mixed with a random voltage. So each time this fires, I have a random voltage, the random note, random rate of LFO, which is quite a nice shifting generative melodic patch. Here it is without the verb. Let's try more percussive shapes. Let's go even faster. Lots of verb again. So that's it for this demo of the multi-burst envelopes from AGH Synth. If you've got this far in the video, write I am a multi-burst in the comments, just something to have some fun with. If you'd like to join my amazing community and gain access to exclusive videos, PDF booklets and more, check out the Patreon link in the description and consider signing up. You can also passively support my work by using the affiliate links in the description and a like and a comment and all that kind of thing is massively appreciated for the YouTube algorithm. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.